Sam, after 30% increase in May, do you have any plan to submit the growth revision to OJK? I think we, um, we had some deficit, so uh, we are looking at uh, uh, fulfilling the plan which we submitted to OJK. I think um, um, at this point of time, we feel confident that we can deliver on the pre-submitted uh, OJK uh, plan. And I think our number in May also got boosted because we did understand that our sales approach has to be focused a lot on trust. So um, from our partner bank, from us, uh, we were out in the market. We did eight to 10 events, gathering customers together, um, showcasing our fund performance, even in this difficult time, showcasing the opportunity of how Indonesian economy is doing so well. And over a period of time, any market-linked product will very likely outperform as long as the customer is willing to stay invested for 10 years. Definitely, Indonesia is looking up to be one of the best performing, not only in emerging market, but if you look at trillion dollar plus economies in the world, Indonesia is a bright spot. So insurance has to follow the economic activity in due course of time. And I'm very confident that uh, a little bit of turbulence, but over a period of time, Indonesia will be shining through. Okay, before the worst period of unit link product, um, how big is unit link product contribution to the PFI mega insurance? Uh, right now, um, uh, our uh, unit link contribution is about 50 to 55% um, in, in the last month and uh, through the year maybe about 40%. So it, it does vary between 40 to 50% of our total sales. And we definitely uh, think that our job as a good advisor is to make, uh, not go by one product, but really first do the risk assessment of the customer, then offer a few suitable options and let the customer choose. So whatever comes out, product mix is okay for us because we have the products um, for the customer to choose from. While you're trying to gain the trust back from customers for the unit link product, what product will be the backbone of uh, PFI Mega Life Insurance? I personally feel having worked in many emerging uh, markets um, in India, in Vietnam, in Thailand, and now in Indonesia, and I have seen this kind of turbulence in India in 2010, uh, where uh, Unitlink new regulation came from the regulator. And again, 10, 12 years back, Unitlink is still a significant portion of the sales. And I personally feel that these are fast growing economies. The markets, the equity markets will outperform the government bond or the fixed income interest rates over a long period of time. And I personally feel that it is a good opportunity for the customer to buy protection, participating in the uh, equity market opportunity. But again, it's the risk profile of the customer. A customer who does bank deposits only, he may buy a traditional plan, but a customer who already has exposure to mutual funds, or has an online share trading experience, believes that the market will outperform over a long period of time, then insurance is the place where it's a longer term product. It's not every month you have to evaluate with the NAV. So if you go with a longer term mindset, I think there is a good opportunity for the customers. And I think over a period of time, it's, it's very important for us to, to keep performing better than the market, build that trust with the customer so that he does feel that this is a way to go. Some customers will get convinced now, some will get convinced in due course of time. But it is important to have that dialogue with the customer, especially when there is so much happening in the industry. And also you said at least um, the industry need two quarters to adjust with the new regulation. And during that period, uh, how is the competition going? Um, during that period uh, of adjustment, I think uh, 
Uh, one is uh, that for some of the people, maybe uh, the products may not be fully compliant with OJK regulation during the period given by OJK, so they cannot sell that product. So thankfully for us, uh, both our regular premium and single premium, we have been able to launch uh, right and the timeline, one in April and, and the other started when the new regulation came into force in March. But for the companies where there is still working on getting all the approval, making all the system changes, putting in the new processes required, uh, if uh, the, all that doesn't get completed, it will impact those companies. S the second part is that you know, when you illustrate the benefits and other things, and the customer is hearing so much about unit link, um, that quality of advice becomes very key. So the companies which have good quality of advice will be able to fix this faster. And the third, as I said earlier, is the issue of choice. So uh, in the industry, people who do not have enough choice to offer, like endowment, pure protection, and unit link, and those who have not been able to launch the products and others, they will get more adversely affected than the companies which have been able to create these three options, which help them win the customer's trust back. Okay, another thing that actually interesting to um, talk is about the OJK provision for increasing the uh, capital minimum limit. How do you see it will affect the industry? I think it's a, um, uh, it's, it's a good idea coming from the regulator. Because uh, as of now, if you look at some of the other markets, as I said, where I have had the chance to work, uh, the number of insurance players are quite many in Indonesia compared to the size of the total industry. So if you compare um, GWP per player, Indonesia is one of the uh, smallest fragmented market in many of the regional uh, countries. Uh, and OJK, I think, understands that the entry threshold of the capital required to set up an insurance company was low in the past. And that's why it's talking about bringing that limit high, up to 500 billion, and then up to 1 trillion. I think the 500 billion would be quite uh, uh, good. 1 trillion, we'll have to see how many people how many companies can quickly meet that uh, criteria. So that would be a little bit tough. But I want to take this in the spirit of, again, um, uh, st strengthening the industry for building trust with the cust customers. If the if insurance companies will have more paid up um, capital, it will make the customers money with the insurance companies uh, more secure. It will create some challenges for the insurance companies on their return and, and managing it. But I, I really see how, from where the regulator is coming for uh, this uh, change. So I think uh, OJK has a very, um, you know, uh, consultation process and uh, our industry association, RG, is also formulating opinion on this and will share the feedback and we'll have to see what's the time horizon and how much does it go to. But again, it's, it's a good uh, step in the direction of restoring the faith of the consumer in the industry. How do you see the consolidation map in the future? Because we saw it in banking sector before. Yeah, so uh, I, I, it's, it's difficult to have that clear vision of how many players will be there, but I definitely see that one third um, of the players will find it very difficult because uh, it's not only the, the higher capital. IFRS um, is also going to be implemented in 2025, which will be an investment. And also, uh, it's more risk-based capital calculation methodology, which will make some products um, uh, you know, requiring more capital. So as a combination, it will put pressure on the bottom one third of the market for sure. Uh, but overall, we have seen what happened after the banking reforms in Indonesia, that banks have come out stronger, consumers' trust in bank has 
increased and I think uh, it is a necessary play um, going forward. And um, based on your uh, first quarter, uh, your capital is still 216 um, um, billion and uh, the target is actually 1 trillion. How, yeah. What is your plan? So, so I, I look at capital in two ways. One is the solvency. So the industry is at about 487 or about 500 percent of capital uh, solvency and we are at 2348 percent. Um, our paid up capital is about 426 billion uh, or thereabouts, so 500 billion uh, by 2026 with a couple of more years and um, it looks like business as usual for us to reach both the 500 billion mark. For us, we have a lot of capital insolvency with 2300% capital um, uh, in there and I think Fundamentally, uh, this is a, in the joint venture Prudential, which brings in a lot of technical um, competency on insurance given its 147 years of uh, experience. It always does understand that there has to be enough capital in the local venture. Of course, the parent is one of the highest rated insurance companies and uh, has a lot of capital surplus, but here also, uh, commitment is very high and that's why we have 2300 uh, percent uh, uh, solvency ratio at, at this point of time.